welcome to Our Energy Matters with Anthony Mana and Dina Marie. Hello, Anthony. Hello, Dina Marie. I'm so here. We are carrying on episode number twelve. Uh, Our Energy Matters, and uh, and I I start by saying to you today, yes, indeed, our energy truly matters, especially the energy my friend Dina Marie reveals in her wise, brilliantly accessible meaning her down-to-earth, heaven-sent, sensible, practical, doable, manual, titled Our Energy Matters, The Art of Crystal Reading, where you can learn how to manifest your heartfelt intentions. For me, this book, your book's enlightenment, enlightened prescriptions, smack force power, guidance, invites me to stand on a sturdy threshold and wonder, do I wanna live a joyful life? A life of soul searching self love? That's the part that you express in that book so much that has helped me so much to come to an understanding that self love is so important. Spirit wonder honesty, because you ask for that. In those, and I thought about that when, when I read your your, uh, when, you, when you're helping your clients and doing your crystal reading, honesty is, is like you are, you are helping them to come to the honesty, you know, whether it's, you know, on the beach, <laughs> you know, or, you know, right, right there. I mean, you know, just, just reading their crystals, uh, et cetera. And I, that comes up over and over again. And I'm, I'm becoming such an authority of your book that I told you earlier, I'll probably write the sequel. A life sanctioned by healthy inter intersupportive interbeing relationships, ordered and sustained by loving kindness. Come enter her book to discover her sacred plan to set to set the mind free of blockages and welcome the angelic posture of natural awareness offered as a kind of Eucharist of chakra evaluations enlightened by the prisms of earthy to heavenly vi vibrant crystals. The word chakra she pondered in Our Energy Matters means wheel in Sanskrit, an ancient East Indian language. And there are seven of these major energy centers in the human body, so new to me. Why didn't they teach me this in Catholic high school? Ha ha ha. And hundreds of minor ones. And they receive, assimilate, and distribute energy. There we go. Throughout our energetic fields, our auras. And now with Dina Marie, Lady Grace, my celestial alchemist, I am pausing at each chakra on the illuminated path that leads the way from earth to water, to fire, to air, to sound, to light, to thought. Today, we explore the ecstatically endowed crown chakra, AKA to know or thought. Let's start at Dina Marie's prescriptions for the chakras, pages 52 to 53, which I just, having gone through this book so many times, I just discovered them and I love it because it's all about practice where practice can lead any of us to, as I quote, find something simple to jumpstart the energy center, end quote. That is so important. I read these things and I went, I want to be, I love, look at this, the fourth. Oh, what about the third? And Okay. Her prescriptions direct us to connect with a higher power in the seventh chakra. Her prescriptions direct us to connect with a higher power. She's, she's asking us to do these things. Talk to an angel. Are you kidding? Of course, be still, listen, connect, connect with others. Look at the stars, think positive affirmations. And now Dina Marie. Will you please open the way to our understanding of the crown as you see it and how we might grasp and take pleasure in crown glory? <laughs> I love it when you talk to me. This is exciting. 
you bring new life into my book and you remind me, I love talking about the chakras. It makes so much sense to me. So when you look up, that means your crown chakra is open. I look up a lot, maybe too much. And that's where you get the inspiration, you know? And so when someone's in tune, children will look up and they'll, they'll brainstorm and they'll paint pictures in their mind's eye. And if people look down and they shake their heads, so I say, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do? And they're like, I have no idea. And they'll shake their heads and look down. And a kid will say, I'd buy a car and I would take it around the world. And so that's your crown chakra. That's where spirit, God, universe dumps energy into your head. And it's whimsical and it's fun. And it's that little aha moment. I, when I do the chakras, I put a light bulb over my chakra man. It's the, the light bulb goes off. And recently you had someone pass and you, your friend sees or senses something you can't see, but sensing, that's how you know that shock was working. And uh -huh. if you pay attention to the synchronicities and the winks from the universe, that's how you keep it tuned up. Wow, the winks from the universe. That's the beginning of a poem. That's the beginning of a song, the winks from the universe, because it centers us, it awakens us. And I told you, I, I teach the chakras backwards. So I start by the crown chakra, which is right here at the top of your head. Um, it's open. The babies, when they're born, it's still, it's still forming. So I feel that's where spirit, you know, kind of drops us here on earth, but we still need to reconnect daily, which is your meditation, setting your intentions, counting your blessings. Uh, how do you close it? Worrying, being hopeless. I've seen a lot of upbringing from religious uh places that close the crown chakra because it's so um demanding and when i go to church and see jesus with blood on him that was not making my crown chakra open and it was closing my third eye so that's where you get that connection so i prescribe daydreaming pretending coloring uh just that whole if i had all the money in, in the world what would i do opens that chakra but if i get children or adults who look down and shake their head then they get a, a prescription, right? And my old office, I set up a whole nother room for coloring, for belly dancing. <laughs> you go to the next room and I would have a belly dancing class or I would have a, a intention board. You would get uh, magazines and write all these things and put them down, but it was so fun. But I took adults, I called them adult, Montessori for adults or something like that. I don't know, but I had two beautiful rooms. One was for the healing and the other was for the prescriptions. And they couldn't go home until they finished their, their homework. Great. <laughs> and they got, they got better. So what is the, I noticed that in the cheat sheet, when, oh, when I talk to people about this, I should show, this is, this is our energy matters, the art of crystal. Uh, reading um, and there's the cheat sheet in the back and you know I noticed every time that like for the crown chakra what crystals do you when, when I ask you about those crystals how do they appear as far as the crown goes crown is white or clear so clear quest crystal well clear crystals uh snow quartz uh, diamonds. Uh, you know, it's funny how people wear stones all the time and they do connect to a chakra. So when I'm working with somebody who wears a lot of turquoise, I know they're trying to work on their throat chakra. Uh, tiger's eye is like, like your, your power chakra and that's trying to assert yourself. And I go by color. So it goes from clear white to red, like the rainbow. And that's how I match the chakras, but I can do it with crayons. So if I get a kid with 64 crayons and they pick, uh, two black ones, a blue one, and a red one, I know they're depressed and they need to express themselves. Oh, so, so how do you, but how do you know that? What, what is the, what? It's the color. It's the colors of the, the, the chakras. So the ones that are missing are the ones they need to open up. So if you get a kid that gets a lot of, loves uh, white and pink and turquoise, they're, they're, they live in their heads and they like to read, but they need to go out and play. They need to get outside. So there's, you know, nothing's good or bad. It's just that you want to balance your chakras. So someone who looks down, we're going to do intention work. We're going to count our blessings. We're going to change our tune. We might have fun. I used to take everyone karaoke. <laughs> yeah. And kids end up doing voice lessons and singing, but until they opened their throat chakra, they were really shy and they didn't do very well in school. 
So it's silly. It's not silly. It's I usually give them three prescriptions. So for the crown chakra, you and I, first thing we did was set our intentions and count our blessings. Then we focus on the beauty of this world. Then we might hear an inner voice, like your, um, your friend is hearing a little whisper from the other side about, about maybe get some direction on what we can do here. <laughs> That's what I talk to teach people how to be their own guru or medium, right? So you find direction from above from a source that's endless, instead of getting direction by maybe human beings that are not so bright, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you know, giving you you ideas. Like every time I go somewhere, I ask for a sign. And if it if I get a synchronicity or a wink from the universe, then I move forward. But if I don't want to do something and it doesn't feel good to me, I don't. I wait. I wait it out until I get a sign. And that's your crown chakra. And that's how you want to live your life by looking up. And so I, you know, right now I'm looking at, I can see birds and I can see flowers still, and I'm looking at nature. So I get my walk in and I feel much better and talking to you, of yeah. course. Yeah, I know. I know. That's the way I feel too. I, I like when you said you get your walk in, it's, it makes all the difference in the world for me to, to connect to nature. We talked about this in our other episodes that, um, that that's the, uh, the power of uh, living in the moment is because it puts me there. And I was, uh, I was t talking uh, to my partner about the passing of his brother and the fact that it's so hard to stop thinking about it, stop thinking about it, stop thinking about it. I said, well, when I start walking in the woods, I think about it in an entirely different way. It's not oppressive. And also um, when I meditate, I. It it's just it's like natural awareness. That he just Joe, the person who's deceased, comes to me because I communicate with him through the spirit. You know, and I mean that's what it feels like. And if some people said to me, "Oh, that can't happen. That's ridiculous." Well, then they just don't know because I I know that it's happening because I can feel the power of it. You know, and it's and it's not miraculous. It's not um weird it's just acknowledgement you said a knowing it's a knowing and it just and it feels right so that's your heart it's a knowing and it feels right that's when you act on it um if people don't get that knowing or feeling or intuitive hunch or aha moment that means they're living in the root chakra and they're living through the physical world you know you everything's hard you have goals you force but you get it done but are you happy? Yeah, do you, do you feel inspired and imaginative and do you feel creative? I mean, if I see way too many people right now living in the physical world. It's all about the stuff. It's all about, you know, what I can achieve and do and, you know, put it up for everybody to see. But there's some beauty in just being. <laughs> and I've been being for about 10 years and like I'm house sitting in a big home. And I just feel like I made some major decisions because the universe winked at me all these 10 years that less is more you know it gives me more time to go to the woods it gives me more time to live in the higher chakras when you have a lot of stuff then you have a lot of stuff to do <laughs> and you can't be as much so i love and, and, and it weighs you down it's, it, it really it's almost like a a gravity pull you know you i, I find it really hard I, yeah i i just i can relate to that so much and i mean in the root in my my root, if I can say such a thing, if if you were treating me as a client, I would have to talk about productivity. I think I've mentioned this to you before that my life was so burdened by productivity as a professor that it was just like, well, every thought I had was supposed to become a published article or something of that sort, which was so uncanny. It was so deliberate uh, of, um, what can I say, of a force that caused unhappiness, you know. Now, some of it was okay because I collaborated with people I loved. We almost did dances around it. Uh, I explored going into classrooms and doing drama with kids and getting them up and talk, you know. So some of it was absolutely brilliant, but it was too much. 
you know, and you, yeah, too much. And I, I realize that now that I'm retired, how did we ever get through it? Well, my friend says the same thing. He was an art educator in elementary school for 38 years. And he had to do these art shows every year. And he was driving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back. How did we ever do this? Well, we didn't, we didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know. And that's what the crown chakra is, is knowing. You just know. And I'm watching my daughter raise kids, you know? So I understand that you're in constant motion and we keep moving, but that time alone with spirit or God or whatever, you, nature, I don't care what you call it. As long as you take some time to be still, get that, that inner voice, which is your intuition, then move. But when we, oh gosh, when you get on a treadmill and you start running, you know how there's a certain point where you can't get off unless <laughs> you push the button and it slows down. And that's where we're all going. And I, I thought the pandemic was going to teach people a lot. And everyone's right back to just driving too fast, yeah, yeah. flipping people off. And I'm like, what? Didn't anybody learn? I, I mean, I learned a lot. I got closer to my family and friends. I got closer to God. I got closer to myself. We got to practice self-love. Um, I just thank you, Anthony. I have to say that every time we have these uh, Zoom uh, meetings or calls, how um, God told me to call you and we've been calling each other for, yeah, yeah. Oh, and I just, it lifts my spirits, you know, and that's the crown chakra. It lifts my spirit. Yeah, lift, lift the spirits. And all right, so to end, I want to say then, folks, Dean Marie is the host of Lift Your Spirits. I just, that's her weekly radio program on 1150 AM KKNW. But you also say there's another way to get to it. Uh, my website's Dina at Dina dash. Oh, Dina dash Marie.com. Yeah, no, I just, just said that. Yeah, I said her website is Dina dash Marie.com. Oh, okay. You know, and the thing about that is when you go to the website, you're going to, you're going to hear about Reiki, her, her use of Reiki. You're going to hear about her labyrinth. You're going to hear about her retreats and, you know, other work that she does for healing. My website, where you're going to find an interview, well, you're going to find many interviews, but you're going to find an interview with Dina Marie is anthony at anthonymanabooks.com. That's M-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, anthony at anthonymanabooks.com. You'll go there and you'll, um, you'll find an interview that uh, I asked Dina some very important questions about her life and how she got into this business and you know, what made her, what made her a ce celestial guardian, uh, <laughs> you know, who doles, who doles out chakras <laughs> to those. Doses, doses. <laughs> doses, doses of chakras. Okay. Doses that lift your spirits. That's what we're lift going for. Yeah. And I think the, uh, because I was interviewed on the radio program um, and it was such a joy because it was like, uh, it was free, freedom. You know, and if you go there, you see musicians and philosophers and painters and dancers and so many other types of people that want to be lifted. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> One thing you said that's going to be a nice transition to our next episode is the, the idea of silence and stopping and being still. Because I read, I read something about that that I was going to incorporate in this episode, but it didn't happen. But I'd like to talk about that the next time about your understanding of what that means and why it's so important for us to slow down, stop. <laughs> okay. So okay, I, I look want... forward to it. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks a lot. And and uh, what do we say to each other that we always lift our spirits because <laughs> you know we we come to understand loving kindness and good friendship. And good it's friend. essential. <laughs> okay, so I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.